another talk, an art talk with artist Zoya Skoropadenko. We will be doing this every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central European time. Last week we did the floods. This weekend she came over to Paris from Monaco to continue the project um, uh, flooding in Paris, which she has been uh, painting since 2016. And I hope everything works fine because I saw something going in and out. Anyway, um, <laughs> let me introduce you, Zoya Skoropadenko. Woo! You're here. Let me switch us. Now you are place one. Hi, Zoya. How are you doing? Hello, everybody. Hello, Chantal. Hello, Los Angeles, London. I can see people joining us. I am not so far yet. I'm like, oh, oh, look at this. Follow me. Uh, bonsoir à tous et toutes. Wow, looks good. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Haps team. I think we have it on the control for now. The Haps team is in the background. Um, very good. We have Robert. I'm going to let me highlight those comments. I, I always like that. Present on screen. It always takes a little bit. That was quicker before. They should make that one click. Now it's like two clicks to do that. Here we have Ricky. Let's let's put him on the screen. Ta-da! Oh, and we got already super hearts. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. So hello. Hi, Hepsim. Hi, Pablo. Hello, everybody. And we have Robert von Buren. And exactly. So Zoya. Are you still there? Because you just yeah. I'm still there. I yeah. can see you. Yeah, I'm on and off. Yes, I don't know why. Oh, it doesn't matter. Just we just continue, and if there's an issue, we can always bring you back. It's not a problem. So, how's the week going? Very well, very well. I am working on different art projects. Uh, tomorrow uh, is going to be live. One interesting project. I'm not telling right now because we are launching them tomorrow. But uh, yeah, I am in comparison to Paris, where everything is closed in Monaco, we have restaurants that are open for lunch. So I had the coffee in a cafe today. Very nice. I'm so jealous. So you were in a cafe. Mm -hmm. That will be our talk today. Um, the artist in Parisian cafes. So you were going to yes. ask, yeah, you yes. were going to ask me a question and then I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> Yes, let me ask you a question. Uh, what is your favorite artistic cafe? What, what, what is artistic cafe for you in Paris? For me, an artistic cafe is where people are sitting and are sitting there with their notebooks or the sketchbooks or uh, whatever and putting their inspiration down. And I see that at many, many, many places. So I think what, the first place for me that, um, let me make myself a little bit bigger hold on i think for me the the, the first place where i experience like artistic cafe i live around cafe charbon and there's a lot of movie uh script writers and i was observing one guy for months and months maybe even years and i was always thinking what is he doing there he had a nice mole skin da 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 and then one day i was watching the caesars you know that's like the oscars of France, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he mm -hmm. won a Caesar, that guy that I always see in the cafe writing, and I was like, oh my god, this is so amazing. So yeah, so like, the, you know what is artistic? That's artistic. I see at uh, the saint Regis. that's another favorite one. That's of course one where you come uh, as an artist, but also I see um, David Turney, a photographer passing by there often. He makes pictures around there. So. Yeah, that, that is that is for me like what an artistic cafe is. And what what does it mean for you? What is it for you? Uh, well, uh, I mean, I agree with you. San Regis is my favorite place uh, because it's uh, around uh, where where I am moving around that area. And uh, I do meet uh, uh, my friend artists there and we sketch in there and we talk in there. But uh, I think the uh, artistic cafe, like we, like, 
I know it from the history, they're a little bit gone because uh, we don't really see art, famous artists in the cafe very rarely. I barely can't remember seeing the famous artist in a cafe. Uh, so unfortunately, like not like it was in a Picasso time when they're like, you know, Picasso, Braque, there was surrealist and they were creating something. Unfortunately, I don't know, maybe it's virtual these days, but I never really, I very rarely see this kind of people in the cafes. But That's not true, that's I'm not watching. true. Oh, where is she? She keeps going away. Um, but that's not totally true because we we saw an artist together when we were having dinner, like our one of my last dinners. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's when when it's a big art event. Yes, we can meet actually these artists. Yes, and we did. So we show the, the yeah yeah yeah. Event. I showed I showed yeah. a picture. Like here here we go. I'm just going to make it big now. So there it is. So here, here we are. Uh, we are sitting here with the. We are in a very famous brasserie leap, uh, which is one of the oldest historic, very artistic uh, brasserie of Paris. It's located in uh, Saint Germain, and it has tons of artists uh, visiting and eating there since like hundred years. Uh, so Picasso, of course, was there. There was Dali. There was everybody. I think everybody big names of 20th century was in a brasserie leap. In the Brasser de Lip, because like, how old is it then? So from the 19th century, basically. But anyway, it's yeah, Very it's a, fan, a fantastic, a fantastic restaurant. If you're in Paris, go visit it because it's amazing. But who, who did we meet? Uh, uh, we met a very famous uh, French artist. Uh, her name is Orlan. I'm trying to see the. I, I think I upload here. We are. I upload big, big image of uh, just me and her in the. Here we are uh, in the Brasserie Relief. Ah, okay, uh, yeah. And she is famous by performances and photography and uh, uh, installations. So if somebody will type Orlan, there will be a Wikipedia on her. And uh, yeah, she's one of the French contemporary artists, like a legend. This is how we spell it, I think. Orlan, I'm just typing it. O O R L A N E. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Is that? Isn't that how you spell it? O R. I think that's how you spell it. O R L A N E. Oh, without the E. Okay. Anyway, yeah. her name is Orlan. Uh, if you like to see sexy pictures, go check her out. Anyway, she was a rebel in the seventies and eighties. So, you know, and uh, female artists, how difficult uh, for them were uh, to, to, you know, struggle through the conjuncture art. So, yeah. yeah. So hey, but let's cool. move on. Let's move on to um, to um, your department, like the more like um, the painting. Um, which picture is the first one we're going to be seeing? Yeah. Yeah, I, I suggest we start from the oldest uh, cafe, uh, oldest cafe in uh, Paris. Mm -hmm. And this is this uh, place. I'm putting up the picture. And it's called, uh, uh, it's called Le Procope. Have you been in Le Procope? Where is it? Which one is it? Um, ah, there it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it bigger. Is it La Pre you have two pictures of La Pricop. Okay, I'm yeah, going to inside, inside and outside. Okay, let's first check out the outside. So that is the outside of the cafe and which arrondissement is it? Um I don't know. I think it's a 6 or 7. It's uh, just the side of the uh, Odeon the Place d'Odeon. So it's oh. where all the cinemas are just uh, over there. It's going towards the Rue du Seine. Ah, okay. And this is the Oh Damn, I just pushed it away. Sorry. Um, oh, where can I find it back now? The inside of the cafe. Here it is. I found it. I just wanted to make it bigger. Sorry. Um, so I make this one bigger now. Yeah. Is it big? Yeah. It's beautiful. Huh? It is like really the connection. Is it going in and out? Can everybody... Let me know if it's live going in and out. What we can see on our um, on our on our side of the studio is it like because we see ourselves and also the 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 pictures going in and out. Is is it 
Is it all good and all clear for everybody? Ellen at work. Hey, Ellen, bonjour. <laughs> I'm just asking yes. the questions. The question. Somebody asked, can I love, uh, love to eat? Uh, there looks good. And uh, uh, is it good enough? Uh, yeah, the restaurant is, uh, is rather nice. Um, the food is very French. So you can have uh, snails there. Uh, don't remember frog legs, but I, I bet they ha they have there. But their um, uh, the interior is very beautiful, and uh, I do occasionally uh, have dinner there with my art collectors and uh, their artist friends. So yeah, it's very nice interior. So on the second floor and maybe third floor they have a restaurant, and on the first floor they have a little bit of restaurant and a bar. And uh, uh, have you ever been there? No, I haven't. Yeah. Well. Uh, when they open, we go there <laughs> because it's, uh, it's uh, uh, of course, it's rather touristic these days, but it still have this charm of this uh, 1600s when it was open. It was open in 1686. 1686. Yeah, 1686. That is uh, by the Italian guy uh, whose name was Procopio. And um, yeah, he, he opened and it was almost uh, non-stop running. It was closed a little bit in 19th century, but reopened in 20th century. So they claim that this is the longest uh, ever existing cafe in Paris. Oh, and on wow. the first floor, you can still drink, um, um, uh, what's this called, this green drink? Absent. Absent, yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Yeah. Because I, I occasionally, I, I'm not a big fan of absinthe, but I have to say it's very beautiful how they serve it in this fountain and they give you the sugar and you put it on the glass and you sit and all the Parisians go and pass by the window. So it's very, very pretty. Uh, but anyway, so because the Procope was so long time in Paris, of course, there are many artists who add there. And of course, it's also beautiful. So again, lots of artists add there. Uh, so they it started in times of Voltaire and Diderot. And Diderot was a very wonderful uh, art critic. So he mm -hmm. was meeting also the other artists like uh, Fantin Latour, uh, actually wrote put now the picture of Fontaine Latour. Yeah, because uh, what I'm was... just, yeah, I'm just looking like somebody asked, where is it located? It's in Rue de l'Ancienne Comédie in the 6th arrondissement. It's called the oldest cafe of Paris. Yeah. That's what they say, but probably it is, it is quite correct. Yeah. So this is the, uh, uh, this is the uh, Latour, the uh, George Latour, the French artist uh, from the 1700s. Uh, who probably was eating there because it is a very famous place and of course he was meeting the critics so he was probably there so he oh was wow it is them. super duper it's super amazing sorry i'm just messing with the that is a beautiful painting so she's well, holding a, she's holding an uh, a, an a skull yeah well, yeah wow uh, well uh, the, the um, Fontaine Latour no it's as as artist George Latour uh, was famous by the people in this kind of candlelight and it's a half uh, enlightened uh, figures so it's just this this kind of picture is very representative of that artist and uh, of course there was uh, probably the, the person who was also coming and going uh, going and having a coffee there was uh, Nicolas Poussin who was the uh, the main uh, classicistic uh, painter of France and uh, probably in Europe at that time mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, actually, there was a very funny story. The Voltaire was drinking about uh, how many coffees he drinking? He drank about uh, forty coffees a day. Forty <laughs> coffees a day, and people are wondering how many coffees I drink per day. Guys, I drink fifty <laughs> coffees a day. <laughs> they need to be supplied. <laughs> no kidding. wonder he wrote so many books. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Well, and of course, there was like the uh, the Americans who went there in those times. That was uh, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson. Uh, Thomas Jefferson actually was going around Europe uh, and uh, stayed even here in Alps, and he passed Provence and Italy, and so of course he went to Paris, and uh, he was one of the famous people who uh, was at, who ate in Leprechaun. Well, the other uh, place uh, which I'm going to show right now is, have, do you know the, uh, the place called uh, La Perouse? Uh, yeah, I've heard of it. 
Yes, La Perouse, it's in the uh, uh, Quai de Grand Agustin. Uh, we actually uh, almost passed by on the other side. It's on the other side of the uh, Pont Neuf. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It's in the middle on the little islands. In the, it's still on Ile de la Cité or not on the Pont Neuf? No, 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 it's on the other side. It's where is uh, uh, the six, it's a uh, Latin quarter, basically. Ah, okay, okay. But it's on the on the corner. It's very because it's kind of like still stylization for seventeen hundreds. Uh, so it's looking like very fancy. And inside is also very nice. I'm showing what is inside. Here is inside of this place. Uh, I ate there, mind you, long time ago. But it's also quite beautiful. Uh, it used to be a three Michelin star about nineteen. 30s or something, but they lost uh, all the stars through those times when I had there. And uh, now they change in the last 10 years, they changed like three times owners. So maybe when they open, we go and check it out. How is the kitchen there? Exactly. It looks but amazing. Very, yeah, yeah, it's very beautiful. It was actually, it's a, it was opened as a kind of a food place in 1766. So it's 18th century. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was opened by the lemon lemon year of the king. It's a guy who was preparing and selling the lemonade for the king. Oh wow! So yeah. he got so uh, he, he was uh, he was uh, he made he made the king a bit sour. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why he decided he bought this place and uh, uh, and, and start selling wine there. And then in 1860, I think, uh, there was the guy who bought it as a restaurant and then they started running it as a restaurant, basically, for the last uh, 100, almost 200 years. Yeah. yeah. No, mm -hmm. the, the, it looks it looks like really... Um, oh, I tried to highlight in a, a comment, but my computer started to uh, reply. That was not the idea. Present on screen, like Peter was saying, that is lovely. Yes, and uh, the one of the uh, major clients uh, from the art world was uh, Auguste Trudin. Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was Cocteau. He liked this ambience. Uh, of course, like I think in every uh, more or less fancy cafe there was Picasso because everywhere, any cafe like uh, historical or artistic or literary uh, in Paris, everywhere was Picasso, literally. And there's Tons of photos of Picasso sitting in different cafes, signing, signing his uh, lithographies or making doodles and things like this. He was like hanging around Paris. But of course, he also um, um, he was old. You know, he became old. I mean, he was he didn't die young, so he had well, a lot of years to yeah. hang around into cafes. And he was also like already known when he was uh, alive, so he had the money to spend. For sure, for sure. Yeah, and that also showed that those times uh, they uh, they they were meeting basically not in their studios, uh, but they were meeting or on this uh, not only exhibitions, but more regularly they will meet on a coffee because of course they want to eat, and at that time people were eating in the cafes and the restaurants, right? In yeah, but it, today we have more. But I mean, till like we got this virus coming in, we were all doing that. I would do, I still do my meetings in the cafe and the restaurant with lunch or dinner. And we all did that till now because we can't really go outside. So um, yeah, I think Paris is very much about meeting um, and doing business and network in the cafes and the restaurants. Yeah, we met in a cafe in the San Regis. Uh, exactly. We, uh, I sketched the part that you were filming and we decided that we will meet in a cafe. We uh, we had a coffee and then we we did we did a great uh, reportage on the Paris flood. Exactly, exactly. And, and what... I'm uploading now, like for, uh, I have to recommend this uh, particular series. This is a series made by the National Geographic. And if I, uh, somebody likes Picasso and want to know uh, something about him, this is a fantastic series. I have to say, I, I and this is Antonio Banderas who played the old Picasso. There are the people who have playing, the direction is amazing and uh, it does show lots of Parisian cafe how they interacted in this cafe. So I'm very recommending this uh, series to watch. 
So we have to watch this on National Geographic. It's not on Netflix. <laughs> it's not on Netflix. It's on National Geographic. I don't know. I don't have no, no, exactly. I'm, old I'm, I'm yeah. buying DVDs. Oh, yeah, that's true. We can always buy the DVDs. You're right. Yeah. So, yeah. so that was the promotion of a genius a Picasso. Which cafe are we going next to? I suggest we will go uh, to the cafe that doesn't exist anymore, but was very important for the impressionist uh, in their time. And this cafe, uh, the name of the cafe was uh, Otamburin, Cafe Otamburin. And uh, it became very famous uh, because uh, it was a hub for, uh, sorry, it was impressionist, it was post-impressionist. It was a hub for Van Gogh and all his mates. And there, that's where Van Gogh was exhibiting himself and other post-impressionists. And uh, I think it's one of the most important post-impressionist places. So I will show the, uh, I think I have uh, maybe even the photo of it, or like place where it was, if I won't find it. Uh, Hello, Yasin. No, I don't find it because probably. Anyways, the owner of uh, that place was uh, the woman called Agostina Segatori. Uh, she was running that place, and because all these artists were there, they were sketching it, sketching her and painting her. And uh, her deal was uh, for Van Gogh, who was eating there and uh, exhibiting there. He eats for free, but he has to paint uh, the, the still lifes and give it to this Agustina. Uh, what's her name? Agustina. Oh, I keep forgetting her name. Uh, Agustina Segatori, yeah. And uh, so she, right now we have tons of her uh, portrait made by different artists because Van Gogh's mate were uh, Paul Gauguin. Uh, there was Toulouse Lautrec. The Luz Lautrec in that cafe painted a wonderful, wonderful portrait of uh, Vincent van Gogh. This is the portrait of Vincent van Gogh by Toulouse Lautrec made in that cafe. And oh. uh, uh, it was very interesting that uh, some of the uh, famous impressionists like, uh, 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 the second cafe. Uh, two seconds. That's okay. Tell the name. So this is Henri de Toulouse Lautrec who painted Vincent van Gogh. Vincent van Gogh. Yeah, as I would say in Dutch. <laughs> That's true. That's true. As he was Dutch. Yeah. And Beautiful uh, art, eh? you seen It's like a little. Uh, it's like a little uh, art history class for you, if you like art. So yes, so here uh, I, I keep forgetting names are not my big thing. Uh, so uh, Van Gogh had uh, about five friends. Among them was Paul Gauguin, uh, Toulouse Lautrec, uh, Louise Anquetin, and Emile Bernard. And so uh, Emile Bernard and Louise Anquetin, uh, they were they had actually their first ever show uh, in that cafe, and which shows me when I heard about this story, and uh, and they actually sold the works there, and I thought. That's where usually artists has to begin. They have to begin in uh, in the cafes. That's where people are, where they uh, interact with the other artists. And it's actually not bad practice when you are young and uh, you, of course, no museum or no gallery will take you. Cafes, you always can talk to the lady in a cafe and she might say, if you give me one of it, I will uh, please put uh, on the wall and uh, try to sell. And mm. uh, you might sell. So this, I think this is for actually young artists is a very good uh, example of uh, how to start the career because all these guys end up afterwards in Musée Orsay. So they, they yeah. are big. And the Anquetin, the guy who, uh, one of these friends of Van Gogh, I'm showing now the picture of his. Just this, one this question. His just work. Yeah, just one question in between. Is yeah. that a pastel, like the one of uh, Van Gogh that we just saw? Uh, Was that a pastel? Is, yeah, I think it is pastel, yeah. Yeah. Because it's scratchy, yeah. It, yeah, it's, it's, okay. It's, it's, so now... So this, uh, this cafe uh, is uh, by the artist uh, Anquetin, and uh, it was uh, it's uh, one of his most fa famous and recently was sold for a couple million years because I saw the auction and it was on it. And uh, uh, this one is... An 
another port uh, of Agustina Segatori, who was the owner of this or tambourine cafe. Oh, I love this one. And by, by uh, uh, Van Gogh. Yeah. Oh, so I love this painting. This is so beautiful. And it's in uh, in Amsterdam in the museum of. Van Gogh. This is the Van Gogh. Let me just make this all big so that they can make a screenshot without us. So because they can make a nice little little Yeah, nice. Beautiful. So this was when he was in Paris. Somebody uh, wrote us a comment. I went to Lemuris. Uh yeah, Lemuris is a wonderful place as well. Uh, I think Picasso might afford it, uh, and uh, pr I'm pretty sure that Dali went there, all these uh, fancy artists who were in, in their great career. But unfortunately, people like, oh, fortunately, people like Van Gogh and uh, all the expressionists and other people, they were going to the slightly not so expensive places. Mm. Next. Beautiful picture, uh, picture um, painting. Yeah, let me see the next one. So, so first, I would like to talk uh, also about two probably most famous cafes, which are, um, you know, everybody know, I think, who ever been in Paris, is uh, uh, Café de, de, de Fleur. Yeah. And uh, Dumago. They're basically next, next to, each, to other. each other. Yes. <laughs> which one is your favorite? No, I would go for uh, Café Floor because it's 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 more fashion. I know that for the Americans it will be Le Demago, but the fashion people they go they are they are going to um, uh, yeah. What did you say? Café Floor or yeah, Café Floor, Café Floor. But you know, Café Floor. If you go eat there, I mean, I'm sorry to say, but now it's only for the experience because. Everything is so basic and so like, you know, like you you get like basic food, but it's not like really. It's you know, it's the experience to me. It's the exactly. It's, you know, like that's why you go to Cafe Floor. You're not going there because you want to seem to be seen on the terrace, basically. Uh, uh, from my impression, I, I I don't really. I tried a couple times to. Imagine myself being somewhere and uh, why people all live there because uh, lots of my fr friends from uh, outside of Europe, they come and they love to go there. Uh, San Regis is my best place to go. Yeah, yeah. But this is for all my live stream friends that I've met till now that came to Paris. We will always meet in San Regis. And I know I'm not the only live streamer, but that is just the place to go to. So... I I, yes. I I think quite a few people here that came to Paris, they will know that. So, And I'm not the only live streamer. So where are we now? We are, oh, Picasso, it's Café de Flore. Let's see that. Exactly. Uh, Picasso was everywhere in every cafe. Of course, uh, he was in the next ca cafe that I will show you now. Uh, where, where is it? Uh, it's here, this one. Which I actually, it was my last restaurant I went uh, before all lockdowns in Paris. And the I, La love La it. I love it. Yes, it's very, the service was great, the food was great, the ambience of Paris was great. Uh, I just love it. And this is uh, next to, or this is in Montparnasse, yeah, La Rotonde. Yes, yeah. Well, yes. there are, there are uh, three of them, right? There is La Coupole, uh, La Rotonde, and uh, uh, La Coupole, La Rotonde, and the Dome. They're like three yeah. together. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, and all three of them, because, of course, Montparnasse was the place of the artists. They all lived there because it was not so expensive, and they had uh, can afford studios there. And so the Montparnasse in, like, uh, 1930s, 1960s was a very artistic place. And uh, uh, as, I, as I understood, uh, the, uh, La Coupole and La Rotonde, the owner, was very nice to the artist. And they just was even given sometimes coffee for free. So they're all hanging around there. 
with like a couple coins and uh, drinking coffee. I think actually they were drinking only coffee. They didn't really eat there. Yeah, 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 exactly. But it was a smart idea of the owner, which I always say to their owners where they have to look after the artist and invite them and, you know, give at least coffee for free. And uh, that's how the legend will go. But, yeah, um, and then yeah, that's uh, what the legend will go. Well, I will always say as well, like, um, for the ladies, um, there are all the gigolos in La Coupole. So if you ever come to Paris, <laughs> I always like my story. I know I've never seen them, but on the Wednesday night, supposedly you can go to La Coupole and find your uh, gigolo. So, um, I hope that make you guys. And if you go there after, because I think La Coupole closed like at three o'clock at night, or even maybe even late. So it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. Over over twelve o'clock, and if you go over twelve o'clock, you can find, for example, uh, me with other artists already drunk after the dinner. We just end up always there because it's always empty, and they're always nice to the artists, and they having fun because we all come in with a funky clothes, and uh, there is a photographer. As I I go there with my uh, photographer friend uh, from Japan. Uh, uh, Benjamin Lee and uh, with the Chinese artist from Paris, uh, Yin, and just we, we and uh, photographer Antoine Popel. So we just roll out from like some Chinese dinner and say, We're not enough drunk, we need more fun. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. So that's a good that's a good place for after hours. La Coupole, yes, yes. yeah. We don't because have a picture, so we don't have a picture of that. Sorry. I said we don't have a picture of La Coupole, do, do we? No, no. But it doesn't no, matter. No. Doesn't matter. It was limited, limited uh, photography. I could. Have I know. Moved. I know. Yeah. Um, next, next restaurant, next cafe. Where are we going? Which artist? Uh, let's go to this cafe i'm uploading the the photo so this is the uh painting of the cafe this is will be another a painting of the cafe now i will show i think i have a picture of cafe itself this is a uh, cafe de la paix ah and we know uh, that that is uh, at the opera i film that all the time exactly as, as i thought it was your area so you yeah you were, you were there exactly <laughs> yes. Uh, this were uh, this the the place was popular among impressionists, but I think the place was pretty fancy all the time. So it was mostly popular among the artists to paint it, uh, but maybe some of them were eaten. So this one on uh, what is it left uh, with the trees? Uh, this is by Russian impressionist uh, Korovin, mm -hmm. uh, and. The other, the other painting on the other side is by French artist George, uh, unpronounceable name. I'll tell you now. <laughs> um, unpronounceable name. Well, I can I can give you one little uh, little fact about it. Uh, Café Croix de la Paix. Say it again. George Croegard. I'm not sure. It's, 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 I think it's, it sounds like a Belgian name, Georges Croegard. Yeah, Croegard. Yeah. yeah. And um, my information about uh, Café de la Paix, it's the most expensive coffee you can buy in Paris. So I, I think it's 12 euros for a small coffee okay. on the terrace. 12 euros. But then you have an espresso that is little. If you go for a bigger one, it becomes more expensive. But Café de la Paix, the most, coffee, most expensive coffee in Paris. Well, it, it's also very posh. It's looking very posh from outside. And that's why mostly artists were painting outside uh, pictures of that place. Uh, yeah. I have another, another uh, painting of Korovin by that of that place. Quite nice. Okay. It doesn't look was... low, like, a, uh, like what we used to, to see. I think nowadays it's more even posh, looking much posh than that time. What's the name of the cafe again? Café de la Paix. Like okay. Paix, like P-A-I-X. Yes. Let me just let me just type that. Cafe de. It's a uh, cafe of the peace. Yeah. War and peace. La pe. Just typing it. Famous cafe. Cafe de la pe. You see it on the. It, it says on the. At the moment, there is big scaffolding around it, Ellen. Big scaffolding. <laughs> Ellen always wants to know why there's scaffolding. They're redoing the whole hotel that's above it. Um, and I've seen sensational uh, 
robberies are there as well where the thieves would jump and just like scam the whole tables empty and just keep running very impressive when you see that wow. so yeah so this is cafe de la paix and this is the painter constant korovin okay. Yeah, Konstantin Karovin, it was a Russian Impressionist. He went to Paris uh, and uh, he was impressed by Impressionists, so he was following those uh, that, that movement. And uh, this one, you also know it. I actually, I also know this cafe, though it's I, somehow I never end up in, in it, but I always end up in a drunk place around the corner from that cafe. Yeah. It's situated on the Rue du Seine. Yeah, uh, and you know it's on a corner, and there is a small gallery next by, and then there are two galleries in front and a chocolate shop. I am pretty sure you've been there, and I think everybody who ever been in the side of the Rue du Seine, uh, we always saw this place. Uh, and apparently there was lots of artists. So this was a hub in uh, 1940s, 1950s for all the artists. So name all modern artists. Giacometti was there. There was Picasso there. There was Braque. There was. Uh, uh, different, uh, different uh, postmodernist uh, uh, Solange, who is hundred years old, hundred one years old artist. He was there, so that was the place, and that's why I probably also called La Palette because Rue de Seine is the uh, street with lots of galleries. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, basically the Mar the nowadays Marais was Seine about hundred years ago, Rue de Seine. Well, I think it was till the, the 1980s, till mm -hmm. like uh, it became so expensive and then everybody started to move over to Le Marais. Well, well, I, I went first time to Rue de Seine in like late 90s and then 2000, it was uh, not anymore like this hip artistic zone. It went to Marais and now Marais. Exactly, is, uh, exactly. And now the Marais looks like a dead village. Um, yep. because all the galleries are empty and all the shops are empty and yeah it's not as happening hopefully it will happen again in April we yes hope. and we will make it happen exactly I'm coming back in April with the exhibition exactly. um, and uh, you know what I was actually I forgot to say something about Café de Flore that uh, the Café de Flore was the hub for uh, the surrealists it's because Breton lo loves that place and that's where they invented the surrealism so all the Dali, Magritte, Breton, uh, André Masson they all were there so at that time probably was really a comfy, cozy and artistic place with like literature involved and poetry and philosophy. So that was the place because I was thinking like, so where did they met uh, all, all the surrealist people? And it was the cafe floor. Ah, mm -hmm. that's, that's good to know. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah. And there was, uh, and in, for example, uh, in La Coupole again in the Montparnasse, uh, there was a very famous, the, the, the people who was going to La Coupole was Man Ray, the uh, photographer, mm -hmm. uh, with his girlfriend at that time, Kike de Montparnasse. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brassai, so lots of photographers went there. Uh, they were, they loved that place and they were doing photos there. And I think they're actually on the wall, you can see some photos of, from, from that time. Um, Chagall, Cocteau, Flaming, Josephine Baker, Christling, Man Ray, Desnos. There is a lot of people that were going to there. Yeah, exactly. I'm just, I'm just reading. That was the point about that time in Paris, which uh, uh, Woody Allen uh, put in his Midnight in Paris movie, which I totally agree. I saw it three times. I love it. It's exactly we want to be in that time with those guys because when we saw the, when we see the photos, they were having fun, and we want that fun, right? We want to yeah. be in that era. But then, so when you think that in that era there was no antibiotics and there was pretty dirty and there was war every thirty years, so I don't think we want to be there. Exactly. But now we're going to have like after this lockdown and everything what's happening in the world and when everything is opening up again, we're going to have lots of fun because then all our American friends are coming back in town, all the art people. Um, we just like, it's going to be like the roaring twenties. We're going to go crazy when we are all having a vaccination. <laughs> 
<laughs> then we're all allowed to go crazy again, just like with a little tag around our neck, vaccinated, vaccinated. <laughs> but yeah. And yeah, I, th I have to say also, there was another cafe which uh, is uh, not exist anymore. Uh, it was uh, Le Café de la Nouvelle Athens. And it was around 1918. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe late 19, 19th uh, century, beginning of 20th century. And that cafe was a uh, very, uh, uh, the, the favorite among the post impressionists like uh, uh, Toulouse Lautrec, Manet, Degas, uh, uh, who was that? Picasso. So they all went there because, uh, of course, 19th century places. Uh, not many of them survived, especially in the artistic area. Like Montmartre, of course, was so much uh, destroyed and remade uh, that we, of course, lost a lot of these places. Uh, and nowadays, even the place is exists, like a, a building is exist, but inside, for example, sometimes there is a supermarket or there is a bank. There are many cafes like that. Mm. Uh, but they were uh, hubs for the artists of that time. And, um, and it's nice sometimes even just pass by when... Uh, there is a bank you pass by and you just imagining that here was the window and there was sitting having a coffee to lose track. I think it's mm. kind of charming. It's the charm of Paris. You can always imagine something. Yeah. And what about like one that I have not seen passing by yet, but I think a lot of the, the tourists will know that one, the consular. I don't know that. Which which is that one? The consular on the on the on the um, on the mountain. I call it the mountain. Oh, the, Mont uh, the Montmartre. The, the Montmartre mountain, the consulat. That's also where a lot of famous, uh, doesn't matter. Oh, yes. It's probably the one that uh, was the uh, Susan Valadon and uh, uh, her son was going there. Yes, it's very famous. Yeah, that's right. I wanted always to, once to come to Paris and go to Montmartre because it's it's opposite uh, the place where I usually go, so I never really go to Montmartre. Yeah, because you are you are more left banky because you're more on the left bank side. I'm more the right bank side. So I'm the Marais and up, and you're the left side. And you you know we are <laughs> we are I'm two different or two different worlds. No, exactly. <laughs> left bank, right bank. Yeah, it's always that rive gauche, rive droite kind of situation. Yeah, Le Consulat and the Montmartre, yeah. exactly, uh, Ellen. But it is, as I am saying, like, because I'm right bank, she's left bank. So, um, and I think if you're in that whole left bank, like, scene, it's also like you don't really go up to Montmartre. I, I go to up to Montmartre just because Tim then likes to drive there and then we go up and make some pictures and, um, you know. That's then with the, car, with the car it's easier because when I cycle and I usually cycle around Paris or I take scooters, it's a little bit difficult to go. Up no, no, no. That's a, that's why I never go to Montmartre for that reason. I go to Montmartre when I have the the car available, but not to cycle up. To cycle up, there is no there's no way. No, I'm st I'm staying along the flatbed along the the river. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think freeway is the magnet. I also usually I don't go left and right only for the uh, some purposes, but the river is always like bridges, and you always want to sit and watch how the everything floating by and the and the thing. And uh, um, I have to also trade about another one cafe, which I am I keep in reminding which cafes existed more. So there was Cafe Voltaire, which was open in 1790, so we again 18th century back, mm -hmm. and. Uh, this cafe was popular among uh, artists of those times. So, for example, Delacroix was going there, uh, Balzac was going there. Uh, and uh, and then in uh, 1956, uh, that building was demolished, with that cafe demo demo demolished. And uh, um, nowadays, it's a headquarters of the uh, beautiful publishing house Flammarion. And I think you know this house there is a uh, publishing house because i love their books their art albums are amazing and people who love cooking books they do amazing cooking books of this uh, of the famous uh, contemporary books so oh, wow. I, yeah it's uh, because i was i was wondering like where was uh, like rodin was uh, uh, was eating right but then rodin uh, museum is uh, next to museo cell let's say behind it right yeah uh, so He's probably mainly was uh, hanging around there and uh, 
probably I didn't find really cafes that at that time were popular among the artists because uh, the Musée Rodin. Did you know that Musée Rodin actually was given to Rodin as a uh, as a hub for artists? So the artists. I know. Yes, he like he like. So I. Oh wait, wait. I was just trying to highlight something. What became an answer? Hold on. I was gonna highlight uh, Ricky. Sorry. Just do that, present on screen. Yeah, so basically the other week I was in the, in the Rodin Museum and then I took the leaflet home and started to read in more. And yes, he was having that to share with other artists. And then basically they all, he just got them slowly all out so that he could, <laughs> he could read it by himself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because uh, because it was uh, I think it was built by for the general and by the general this this palazzo because it's fabulous that place. It's, oh, it's uh, amazing! It's, yeah, it's super. And uh, and then yes, and then he was a patriarch, and uh, then slowly he moved out everybody and uh, lived happily. And after he lived also a very long life as well. Yeah, he did. And he, uh, yeah, no, that I, what I really liked about uh, the Musée d'Orsay, uh, not Musée d'Orsay, um, uh, Rodin, is that the Musée mm -hmm. Rodin, the best pieces are in the garden. And you, and because we have still the lockdown situation, we can, we can visit the garden, which is, so you can see the best pieces of Rodin there, which is oh. beautiful. So next time when you're here, go to Rodin because you can walk around and check it all out. And we had a very good time yeah, with, all, with all of us because we w we went there and of course like you are the expert. I I think the last time I went to the Rodin Museum was when um, there was like an Andy War was it Warhol? I think it was a modern a modern uh, art an artist with uh, Rodin combined with Rodin. With Rodin. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. When, when did Rodin what, what what was year? I when, think when it the... was. I think it was in two thousand fourteen. Maybe it was. Yeah, two thousand fourteen. I'm trying to remember. No, it was Maplethorpe. Maplethorpe with Rodin. Yes. But then I was like mentioning last time I was there saying that Rodin. Oh no, but he was gay. No, Rodin was not gay. Maplethorpe is gay. Rodin's not. But Maplethorpe is very heavily influenced by Rodin. And I kind of like, that was a very interesting um, exhibition, I have to say, with, you know, you could have done with your, with your sculptures as well, with your, oh. with your bodies. With my torsos, yes. Yeah. I, yes, I have to propose them because, in fact, I, I've been to the um, uh, Rodin Museum when it was the uh, joint exhibition of uh, Anselm Kiefer. And it was also quite spectacular, I would say. And then there was a small exhibition uh, of Rodin's uh, uh, watercolors, mm -hmm. which is also quite nice because we used to Rodin as a sculptor, right? He's a very classical sculptor, but uh, he has a very quite nice, very simple, but uh, very sharp uh, uh, watercolors as well. And uh, I will now upload one. Uh, okay, no, I got kicked out out of my own broadcast. Yeah, Sorry. And, um, I was kicked out that, of my uh, own broadcast. Um, you know the photographer uh, Edward Station? He was an uh, American photographer. He worked a lot for work. Work. I, I put in, I'm putting now his uh, one of the most iconic uh, picture of him. This is his very famous work. And uh, uh, the station, he was uh, he was actually from Luxembourg. He's native to Luxembourg. Mm -hmm. He immigrated to uh, America, but he was a very big friend uh, of uh, Rodin. And ah. so he had lots of photos of Rodin and uh, lots of photos of Rodin's sculptures. And uh, when Rodin, because of course, uh, the different age because Rodin was probably like, I don't know, 100 years older than <laughs> the station. So when Rodin died, the station came special and uh, there is a whole book of uh, his photos of from the funeral. Mm. But I, I was very surprised. And then uh, the museum uh, did a special exhibition of the relationship of uh, yeah. Rodin. I think they're doing a lot, a lot of uh, combined uh, exhibitions there, to be honest. And also, like, uh, it's one of the museums that is uh, self-sufficient. It pays, it pays itself. So it's not, uh, it's not uh, sponsored by uh, the government. 
very possible. Very possible. Yeah, no, it is. It's it 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 supports itself. So, which is also very rare in France because everything comes out of the cultural, <laughs> cultural background. So the cultural well, some, background. Some museums have a big spaces, like for example, Pompidou's Center, right there. Yeah, exactly. It's an enormous place. They closed it now for uh, actually five years. I read. Yeah, exactly. They're closing it till 2023, I believe. I see Sandra here. Sandra, hi. Just quickly saying hello to Sandra. She, she's the one from Tampa, uh, Tampa Bay. Oh, hi, Sandra. Yes, your package is on your way to you, so you will receive it soon. Exactly. So do we have more cafes? We have Mona Lisa Award. Oh, show me. Thank you. Oh, we got a Mona Lisa Award. Oh, thank you. No, I only saw it now. I thought like, thank you, Nina, for the Mona Lisa Award. <laughs> I didn't see that. I thought it was a cafe. I was like, Mona Lisa Award? Where is that cafe? I'm like looking in the side, on the side. No, we got Mona Lisa Award. Let me tell another, about another cafe before before we finish. Um, there was a cafe, Le Brebant, but it was quite a few years ago. Oh, yeah. 50 years ago. Have you heard about it? No, Le Brébant is on the is on the Grand Boulevard. Ah, okay, so it exists. Yeah, yeah. no, it, it it does exist. It's on the corner on Grand Boulevard. It's like a, just before you go up to uh, to Montmartre and stuff. Yeah, that's no, that, that's, that's totally not my. But uh, I know just because uh, they had a very great uh, um, idea. Uh, that one guy in the 1800s. Who was uh, some professor? Uh, and, no, he was a, a diplomatic, the professor of diplomacy, and he was like some uh, very high rank uh, uh, politician. And he uh, started doing in this uh, uh, cafe restaurant uh, Friday dinners, uh, which was called the dinner of uh, Bixio, Bixio dinner. Yeah, Big Sir Dinner Friday. And this D Big Sir Dinner Friday, he was inviting uh, to dine uh, all the intellectuals uh, of Paris. So, like, for example, 10 people, and there will be one will be philosopher, one will be artist, one will be politician, and they all mix together, and he will invite them to so they will know each other and then communicate afterwards. And so this is a fabulous idea. They should, somebody has to do this again. So yeah, but uh, yeah, but actually, this so this cafe is still alive, this uh, Cafe uh, Brebon, because I, I know where it is. And... Um, yeah, it would be good. Well, it doesn't look like that anymore. Yeah, maybe in the summer, the terrace. But yeah, it's still uh, very much alive. So a cultural cafe. Well, you can always start one, uh, Zoya. Well, we did start it. It's called Saint Regis. Uh, and then exactly, the exactly. I just saw a picture of Saint Regis. Let me just because we. Let me just. I I should have put a picture of myself of Saint Regis there. That one of the. People in here made. He's a photographer. Um, here is the. Voila, voila. This is the Cafe Saint Regis on the Ile Saint, Lu, uh, Ile Saint Louis. Yes. And I think this is exactly. No, we took the picture on the other corner. Oh, I have it here. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. A picture made by Earl. Now, Earl didn't put his name on the back, but he shot it with his uh, 4x5 camera, I believe. Oh, so, the, yeah. so this is at the Saint Regis. Can you guys see that? Or can you guys not see that? Let me just... No, put, oh. put, yourself, put yourself in the big screen. Yeah, I have to put myself in the big screen. So this is a portrait that um, Earl made of me in black and white. Very cool. I think it's it's super cool. So uh, yeah, thank you, Earl. That's nice that somebody makes you a portrait. Yeah, so that, no, absolutely. But that's what it is about. This uh, art cafe that all the artists. Uh, I sometimes when I sit there and uh, uh, somebody will chit chat me, I will do doodle of this person and give it away. You know, just uh, it's it's just fun to do this. Yeah. Oh, I. I almost forgot about the the place where i drink coffee and i love it and it's also a very artistic place there are lots of artists hanging around these days it's called la cafe tech 
It's ah, like a fair check, of course, yeah. Of course. How come we forgot about it? Yeah, and, it's... Uh, actually, they are these guys are uh, like uh, the Otamburin cafe where the Van Gogh was exhibiting artists and uh, selling and having food for free. Actually, if uh, you are the artist that they know in the La Cafe Tech, the coffee is for free and you exhibit and you can sell from their wall. Because I had like tons of the exhibitions that I probably uh, did with guys about eight eight exhibitions in the last few years uh, and I love the place and uh, I met a lot of fellow artists from the uh, um, Cité des Arts because they live upstairs and the Cité des Arts is just next by and of course they're all hanging around there for free coffee and uh, Mm. Hey, hey, but listen to this. We started our online cafe because on our online art cafe, because on Sunday, when you were drawing from Monaco here in Paris, the floods, you put a draw a drawing on sale and it got bought with 50 coffees by Sandra. If Sandra is in here, she's maybe working, she can't stay, but you see, we have an online online art cafe. Exactly, exactly. So next time, uh, next time we, we meet and do the stream, we will do another open virtual coffee, and you can you can you can give us coffee, so we'll enjoy it and uh, exactly uh, be, be one of one of the like like the um, the the woman with Van Gogh. Exactly. <laughs> up with the art. Exactly, and that will be very nice. So, guys. Let me just make us both the same size now. Let's see if this all works. The studio is very flickering a little bit, but that doesn't matter so much. Um, well, I hope I, you guys I, enjoyed I, this. I will say also, like, it's not the all art cafes. There was also, like, the Café Gouverboile, Momos, and other cafes. So uh, I think we... if. If people like this uh, this Parisian art cafe, we can continue because there were tons of them and uh, they uh, still exist, some of them. And I think when they will reopen, I think we'll make a stream, we'll go from one to another. I think, I think that would be a super cool idea, uh, Zoya, that we're going to do a stream, go one to another one. And then, um, yeah, and I'm sure that in our next talks, we will have more of the cafes coming back. So I think... We will do that also more often so that at least like we have, um, um, you know, we will always refer back to it. So it becomes like a one big story, which is interesting, I hope. Um, yeah. So what are we going to talk about next week? We haven't thought about that yet. We know we didn't thought, but uh, let's find the subject. We might, uh, let's talk about uh, super great museums of Paris. Because you might know something I don't know, and I know something that I love, and it's not only Louvre or Musée Orsay. And I can also tell uh, the stories uh, when I was working in Musée Orsay as a copyist, and how is it look museum when it's closed and nobody there except exactly me that is and art and all the other people who drag in this art uh, up and down because of course the rotation of museum is amazing, and it's you know the the night in the museum, the movie is nothing about. Uh, the uh, artistic museums because the frames and the works are super heavy and uh, there are lots of signalization has to be checked every week so it's a big fun to do so guys if you want to know more about the Parisian museums and uh, how they live and uh, uh, what are the best museums to see and funky museums to see Chantal and I will tell next week and also maybe what they can do, maybe you guys, if you want to type that underneath here, you can do that also in the replay. Maybe you have some tips on like some um, little gems, little museums that we that are not very uh, common. You know, of course, we know the Louvre, we know Musée d'Orsay. Uh, but are there little places that you have visited or you know about or you want to go and see? Let us know, because maybe we can pinpoint one of those. What do you think? They should comment. They can do yes. that on YouTube, you can do it on Twitter, or you can do it here. I will collect all the comments, and then Zoya and I can pick some out and also mix and match them through our art hour. Because we're one hour online. <laughs> Perfect. 
Hey, yeah, Zoya. Questions and answers. Exactly. So, Zoya, thank you so much for this week. Um, we're going to be... Hi, Peggy. We're going to be uh, doing this again next week, 8 p.m. Central European time, Tuesday night. Uh, art, art with Chantal and with Zoya here on uh, Chantal TV's channel. And we will be broadcasting everywhere, everywhere. Um, so, guys, see you next week. Thank you so much. À la prochaine.